This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global, joined by former WBO heavyweight world champion Joseph Parker. Makes his matchroom debut uh, yeah. tomorrow night. How are you feeling? I feel good. Uh, I just finished the weigh-in. My, weigh my weight was good. Uh, 241 pounds was about 108 kgs. So lean, mean, and ready for a good performance. Mm -hmm. Ready to put a statement on? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's what I have to do from now on. You know, a lot of my fights, you know, a lot of my latest fights have been gone. You know, they've gone the distance. I feel it's time for me to put on a performance where everyone, you know, remembers who I am and you know I look spectacular. So I don't put the pressure on myself, but that's what I want. You know, mm. Alex Leopai, um, experienced guy, um, probably seen his best days, but it's a uh, two Samoans going at it, Australia v New Zealand. Yeah. Um, it's a special occasion actually. Very special occasion. Uh, two Samoans going at it, so it's going to be a lot of fireworks. I, you know, when you have two Samoan fighters, we have a lot of heart. I mean, a lot of fighters have heart, but we have a lot of heart. We don't really fight each other, but when we get in the ring, we're going to throw bombs. And um, I guess my goal going into the fight is going to box him from the outside, and then uh, I want to break him down. And my, my job is to get him out of there. That's what I want to do. Absolutely. Bit of history there as well. You boxed on his undercard when he faced him, Klitschko. Yeah, 2014 in Germany. It's the first time I met him, and he got the opportunity to fight, you know, uh, Vladimir Klitschko. So, I won my fight that day. He lost his fight, but I think with that, he's gained a lot of experience, and he, he maybe passes his, um, his his best days. But I think as a heavyweight, or a lot of fighters carry the power with them, no matter what. So I think he's still dangerous, but just have to get the job done my way. Joseph, of course, uh, this month actually uh, we learned that. Heavyweight boxing, you should know, never overlook uh, someone. Um, so I'm sure you're not overlooking Alex at all. Uh, but people are going to talk about, you know, what's going to happen with Joseph in the future. Um, obviously, the the whole landscape of the heavyweight division is completely turned on its head. Yeah. Two guys you know very well, Joshua and uh, Andy Ruiz. Yeah. Um, Andy's come out and said that he wants that rematch with you. Uh, obviously, he wants to get that win over you yeah, um, yeah. so that's good news for you whatever happens in that Joshua Ruiz rematch looks like you could be facing the winner uh, yeah, it looks like it you know um, I have to take care of business tomorrow night get that out of the way and then we can look into the future and um, you know I, I think with what uh, our team and, and Eddie's been planning is that we want to keep busy and I guess you know with that rematch whoever wins we have the opportunity to, to sort of fight the winner as long as we take care of business of each fight that we have coming up mm. What did you just make of uh, the events on June first? I know it's been a while, um, but we haven't really talked about it properly. Yeah. Um, and you know, you guys gave Ruiz a really good chance. I'm sure you didn't expect him to win. Um, but what did you make of Joshua getting knocked down so many times? Ruiz getting back up uh, and really giving a, a, a pasting. Yeah, I, I, I've sort of seen a few interviews, and, and uh, Ruiz did get dropped, but I think most of it he was un he was uh, sort of standing up, and I mean Joshua hit him, and he wasn't that shaken by the punch and then you obviously see Joshua get hit on top of the head and I think that's I think if he got hit in the chin it would have been different he would have recovered a bit, a bit faster I think but he got hit right on top and even when he was down the ref was counting he had he didn't really recover and so I guess you know when you're, at that, when you're sort of in that sort of situation it's hard for us to, to sort of talk about it because we're not them, we're not him or we're not them but we know that um, you know, Ruiz just put on the pressure and, and chased him down. Mm. And I think Ruiz made the most of his opportunity. You know, he took it with both hands and he chased him down and he made history for Mexico. But I guess uh, Joshua was a great champion and unified champion. The rematch, I'm still 50-50, you know. We just, we just don't know how that's going to be because both guys are going to come back way better now that they know each other. Mm. Uh, I spoke to your trainer, Kevin Barry, today and uh, he said, uh, kind of like, I put it to him really, he said that, you know, if you got dropped in that fight against Joshua, like Ruiz did first, um, and sort of engaged in a scrap um, and got close to him and you could trade off uh, in the inside and use your fast hands, that, that Joshua fight with you uh, in Cardiff could have gone completely differently and uh, you could have kind of done what Ruiz done to Joshua. Do you feel well, like that? I think so. I feel like if I did, you know, if I, obviously if I did get dropped, you know, I would have you know, taking his punch, and I thought, okay, is that, is that what he's got? And he and kind then, of would have gone to finish you like he did with Ruiz. Me, you know, yeah, it would have traded. Um, but, you know, that's, you know, you know, when you look back, you're like, oh, yeah, I wish I could have done this and done that. But, um, you know, if we do get the opportunity to fight again, now I know what I should do in the mm. fight. Mm. Of course, you'd never been dropped until you faced Dylan White. Um, 
again, a, a controversial fight because uh, of the refing and the fact that you nearly uh, had Dylan White out there in the last round. Um, looking back at it, what kind of disappoints you more, though? The Joshua loss or the Dylan White loss? Uh, actually, both. You know, both of them are quite disappointing. Not, you know, I gave everything I, I had at the time. I think the Joshua fight more, I should have done more. I know I could have done more. So that's a little bit disappointing there. The Dylan White fight, I know I can beat him. Just a few things that happened in the fight that turned the event of the fight or the, or the way that went. But um, those are the two guys I want to fight in the future. I want to um, avenge losses that I have mm. and, and make it right in my, in my record. Yeah, there's so many entertaining fights you can be in. Obviously, we mentioned uh, Joshua and Dylan White and Andy Ruiz. And uh, Alexander Uzik's coming up to heavyweight. You've been linked a little bit with uh, Derek Chisora as well. I do want to talk yeah. about that. Um, so we've got David Higgins and, and Kevin Barry saying they never saw a contract. Um, they were trying to shorten your camp like they did with the Dylan White fight. Uh, and I spoke to Eddie Hearn today and he said that, oh, it was just the fact that you weren't happy with the term. So can you just make a comment on that? I, I guess I, don't, I didn't see a contract. So obviously, you know, I leave it to, to David Higgins my management team in New Zealand to um, sort all the detail out and then once it's, you know, everyone's happy, I tell them what I want, I'm sure just sort of tells them what he wants and then you know, when it comes to an agreement then I see the contract and everything's go from there. Mm. So I guess, I mean, it was, it was quite easy to do the Joshua deal and so I guess um, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't to the point where everyone was happy so we didn't, I didn't get to see a contract. But I wanted to sort of, I still want him now. I think he's a, a good fighter, a busy fighter, he throws a lot of punches and I want to test myself against him. Still a big name in the UK, so it'll uh, attract interest. And obviously, uh, you've got a, a good support sort of base in the UK as well. You're popular there, so it'd be a big fight. Well, I think it'll be a big fight. And so, as long as he takes care of business of his next fight, and I take care of business tomorrow night, let's get together and throw some bombs. I, think, I reckon we can make an exciting fight. You can kind of see that being a, a Sky Sports main event on its own on a Saturday night, or even perhaps landing on the. Joshua Ruiz rematch as a chief support. I mean, either would be. Huge. I think either will be huge. Either will be a great opportunity for both of us. You know, it, it can. Uh, you know, whoever wins, elevated to the next level. That's mm. what I think. But of course, you've got a job to do tomorrow night. Chisora's got a job to do against Spilka uh, on the July twentieth. So yeah, full focus on that, both of you. Tomorrow is the night to take your business, and then after that, we'll sit down and uh, make some big fights. Mm. Just lastly, Joseph, you were in camp with Tyson Fury. Uh, just how was that? He's a pleasure to be around, you know, he's, uh, he's in the, I think he's in the mindset that, you know, he, he knows what he has to do in the boxing world, but he enjoys it and he loves it and he makes the most of it. And when we, uh, you know, he came to the gym mucking around and having a lot of fun, even though we we're putting in work and, you know, when I supported him top ranked gym when he was training. So I think we have a really great friendship, you know, and I support him, he supports me and I'm glad to have someone like that in my corner. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, for me, he's number one at the top at the moment just because of the style the confidence you know he's a character and he's just uh, overall a good guy in my eyes just putting it out there I, I know you guys are very good friends uh, he speaks very highly of you you speak very highly of him um, do you reckon you could put that friendship aside if there was sort of a reason to make a clash with you two um, would you be happy to get in the ring with him yeah if there was a reason you know if it made sense for both of us and we both agreed to it I'd love to test myself against him because I think he's number one and I, I want to fight the best in the world. And if I consider him number one, I'd love to test myself against him you know, in this era. Mm. Be interested to see what he'd say about that. Um, but I think he's, he's been touted with a fight with Gerald Miller. Um, are you kind of surprised that Gerald Miller's boxing so soon after the whole scandal? It is surprising, but I, I guess, um, you know, as a fighter, I'm not really sure what happens in the background and who makes the decisions and this and that. So it is quite surprising. I um I'm not really know the rules. You know, I don't know how long you're banned for when you get you know caught with a substance. So it's a very like sort of grey area. It's, I th I think it's a bit grey, and I guess it's boxing. You know, mm. you just you know, I'm just involved in the heavyweight. So whatever happens with them, yeah. So it's very exciting times, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with you and Alex tomorrow. Do you expect a stoppage? That's what I want, and that's what I want to go for. Okay, Stop. Joseph, appreciate your time. I know it's kind of like. Uh, a bit late in the week, it's uh, just after the weigh-in, so yeah, as I said, I appreciate your time on IFL TV, wish you the best of luck on your matchroom debut uh, against Alex Leopold. Thank you. No problem.